Hi everyone, welcome to a new beginning of a video. My name is Tommy and I'm on my way to the barn because I want to take you with me to the barn today. Uh, we received a lot of questions of you guys so I will try to answer some of them and of course I'm going to ride some horses so let's get into that. So one of the questions we received is uh, yeah, riding with a snaffle or a double bridle. Uh, yeah, they asked me if I can ride my Grand Prix horse on a snaffle and if I do so. Uh, the answer is yes, uh, every once in a while. We like to variate a little bit, so like on easy days, on uh, just like yeah, a few days a week you can ride just on a snaffle. And also I recently start riding uh, one of the youngest horses. Uh, for the first time with a double bridle. Actually, that's also a kind of a interesting subject because um, yeah, I believe that you just only have to do it when you feel like your horse is like ready on a snaffle. So don't think that you can add the curb uh, yeah, to in any way kind of force your horse in to do something more than, than uh, it should be able to be on a snaffle. What is also very important and that at that point is that you always choose some light days, some easy days just with a double bridle because I think when you for example going to practice difficult exercises or a difficult piece in the training and then you also add a double bridle for the very first time it's going to be too much. So what I always do is when I put the double bridle in for the first time or first few times actually I choose days that I only can jogging around and cantering a little bit and very light work that I really get used to it and that they don't have any trauma from it or any bad experience because I believe that um, yeah it's very important that the horse accept the bit and uh, trust the bit as well and they don't get any resistance from it so therefore I choose always some easy and light days um, so yeah, maybe I will I will show you today with Quinton a little bit. So the reason I choose to start with a double bridle with Quinton, that's uh, because I had the feeling that on the snaffle he was really well. Um, so therefore I thought, okay, maybe I should uh, yeah take some days to ride him on a double just to get used to it. So uh, it's not that I think that that he was not nice. In fact. I encourage you to wait with the double bridle until you feel that on a snaffle it's nice and easy and you have a good, uh, decent, confident contact. So as you can see here, I am riding with, uh, with a very loose curb rein. I think it's very important, especially when you start riding with a double bridle, that you still have the right connection on your snaffle. Um, there is something going to happen, it wasn't planned, but uh, I think that's exactly the reason why I think it's very important that you have the good contact on the snaffle. Uh, especially in the beginning and if they are young and he was a little bit fresh today. So uh, yeah, I'm trying, trying here to stretch him a little bit and to, to warm up nice. But then you see here, oop, he's spooked. And I think therefore it's very important uh, that you have, have a good contact on your snaffle and not on the curb rein. So when, he, when a horse, especially when younger horses get spooked or so and they, and, and they get like a big half halt from the curb rein, you can imagine, and especially when they're not used to it, that it, that it can cause like a, a shock effect. So that's really something you want to try to avoid. And like I said, it's very important that when you ride with the double bridle for the first time, you choose a day that it's very light and easy work. Here I make a little bit circles, a little bit lag yielding, all those simple things. Oh, yeah, you see he's a little bit fresh. <laughs> and also very important that if something happen or whatever when you're riding, 
that you give them the trust to seek the bid all the time again. As you can see here, uh, he's trusting the double bridle very well. He's accepting the bridle very well. That's very important. And every time, here he gets a little bit too much of the connection. He probably was looking uh, again here a little bit. So I try to make him focus by leg yielding on the circle. And the moment I feel that it's possible again, I try to put my hand forward, that he follow my hand again, that he stretch the neck and don't stay too short. And you can see it's like a very simple trot, nothing special, nothing like uh, with a lot of energy, but just jogging around and give him a really confident feeling just because you know with a double bridle for the first time it's different than before and like I said you really want them to trust the bit and your hands. Here I tried a little lag yielding again. He wasn't listening really well. Here in the corner he come for one second off the bit. I immediately put my hand forward, add a little bit lag that he seeks the bit again. Which a few steps later he did. And then I do the same at the right, in the corners a little bit bending, maybe a little lag yielding. Very simple, without too much pressure, very easy, that, that really is a, a, a training without any difficult stuff that you really get used to the double bridle. And very important that you try to loosen up the contact so don't get too strong in the contact don't take the curb rein because you think they are not good in the contact that's not the solution so only put the curb rein in when you feel like the contact is kind of okay with the, with the snaffle well, here in the canter as well you can see it's a little bit fresh still yeah, that's better. Then in the corner he become a little bit too short in the neck because I had to steer too much because he was fresh and then those things happen but then yeah, a second later if you want to uh, open the neck again, put your hand forward and see what happens. Also for me, it, it doesn't look like it too much when I watch the video back but he felt like fresh and he was like, you know, like in the beginning of the video you saw he spooked once. So I felt it. So it's very important then for, for you as a rider not to hold the contact all the time because you feel it's difficult. Just let it go and when he takes off or he gets spooked, you can correct it. But even when it's a little bit excited, then try to be as light as possible with your hands. Okay, that was not my best transition. So you see, yeah, uh, I, I choose to show you this because I think it's a very important subject that a lot of uh, riders uh, are dealing with, uh, especially when you're going to ride with the double bridle for the first time. I also choose to keep my reins in the position of my hands. I have them now because then I feel that I can control the snaffle more than the curb rein. So if something happened that the half halt get through more on the snaffle. And of course, when the, when the horses gets older or more used to it, or and you can add a little bit more curb rein if you need to, then uh, then it's very important that they trust it and that they stay soft in the contact.
If you could have seen, uh, yeah, this is a little bit the way I uh, like to start to ride with the double bridle. Um, yeah, like I said, it's very important that you just try to feel the needs of your horse. Uh, we also made a video about the bit fitting, so check the link up in the screen if you're interested in it. It's a very interesting video. They talk about like uh, different mouthpieces and so on, so check it out. Um, yeah, if you have any questions or you want to know more or uh, whatever, leave it down in the comments and I hope you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe on our channel if you haven't done it yet because it makes our channel grow and we can make better videos out of it. Bye bye and see you next Thursday.